Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am just another tinfoil hat. Welcome to my show. So today we are going to be discussing one of the most bizarre off-the-wall encounters of modern memory, one of the incomprehensibles, as Kiel would say, the Enfield Horror. Not to be confused with the Enfield Poltergeist, um, what's in a name, right? I mean, a swamp slob by any other name would stink just as much. April 25th of 1973, Mr. and Mrs. McDaniel of Enfield, Illinois, returned home to find their two kids totally petrified. The kids claimed that they were watching TV when they heard a scratching at the front door. Naturally, they did not answer the front door, and the scratching proceeded to move to the air conditioning unit that was in a nearby window. Now, as the kids are telling their story, the scratching starts up again. Now, Mr. McDaniel, thinking that it's like an animal or maybe a prankster or something, goes to the front door, he opens it up, and is greeted by a four and a half to five foot tall thing, gray in color, with two pink eyes the size of flashlights, two little taloned arms kind of jutting out of its chest, and three, count them, three legs. So, he does the only logical thing to do, really, and he shuts the door, grabs his shotgun, heads back to the door, kicks it open, and fires at the creature point blank. Now, what does the creature do but hisses, makes a noise like a mad cat, and bounces off into the night, apparently covering like 50 feet in three bounds. So, flash backward to about half an hour previous, and 10-year-old Greg Garrett had been playing in his backyard, which was actually directly behind the McDaniels household, when the same creature appeared suddenly. He described it exactly as Mr. McDaniel would half an hour later, with the addition that it was covered in slime. Yes, slime. Um, the horror then proceeded to attack him. I mean, it didn't really, like, you know, all spring-heeled Jack sort of attack him. It just kind of bounced on his foot, but that tore up his tennis shoe. So, of course, Garrett ran inside screaming. Now, back to McDaniels. The police and Illinois state troopers were called um, regarding the incident. And, in fact, they actually found tracks, which they described as like a dog's, but with six toe pads. And there were three separate footprints coinciding with the report of three legs, with the right footprint and the left footprint being larger than the back footprint. So, that's very interesting. Um, and sightings of the creature continued. Of course, curiosity seekers and monster hunters flooded the area, and a bunch of them actually saw the creature, and as a matter of fact, a group of five hunters even claimed to have opened fire on it, and again, it was unaffected. It just kind of shambled off into the night. May 6th, Mr. McDaniel was awakened by all of the dogs in his neighborhood going totally berserk, and he looked outside to see the Enfield Horror just kind of moseying down the railway tracks, and then apparently it just again bounced off into the night. Rick Rainbow, a news director from WWKI in Kokomo, Indiana, also saw the monster and even recorded the high-pitched wailing noise that it made. Um, even Lauren Coleman, who arrived in Enfield to investigate, um, heard this anomalous scream. And then, as quickly as it was there, the creature just vanished. I guess it, you know, packed up its little bags and bounced. But um bum Weirdest thing is that the story doesn't really end there. Um, Years later, Greg Garrett was actually sitting on his porch when his wife just showed up in the doorway, shot him in the back, pleaded self-defense, and won the case. So, weird, right? Um, if you want more information on that, I definitely suggest Lauren Coleman's blog on Twilight Language, the copycat effect blog spot. Um, and to me, personally, something as bizarre as that, because especially if you, you know, take a look at all of the names involved, the name game and stuff like that, there's just so much just weirdness involving the entire incident. Um, but anyway, something as bizarre as, you know, that occurrence later, the murder of Mr. Garrett, confirms a certain suspicion to me that the monster wasn't strictly an animal or, um, you know, a wandering government mutant or a mass hysteria from a handful of kids and Mr. McDaniel seeing a kangaroo or monkey, which is, I believe, the official explanation. Now, regarding the kangaroo thing, um, in Mysterious America by Lauren Coleman, he does liken the Enfield horror to the phantom kangaroo phenomena. Um, but much like the phantom clown phenomena, um, 
the actual phantom kangaroos and phantom clowns are very different than their non-phantom counterparts. So there's a kind of sharp division there. Um, at the time, Keel was aware of the Enfield horror, and he likened it to the phenomena which he coined the abominable swamp slob, or yes, ASS for short. Um, in the Anomaly newsletter of November 73, he tied it in with other congruent reports from Pottstown, Pennsylvania, around the, which occurred around the same time, and either I'm totally blind, um, or I just can't find any accounts of the Pottstown incident on any of the websites I frequent or any of my books, so I am going to dig around for that one. So, the shrieking wailing noise, along with the tragic and honestly unexplained death of Mr. Garrett so many years later, um, you know, you could see it as possibly tying it into the ominous, you know, omeny um, activity like Mothman or the Banshee, which is kind of just a fancy way of saying that these creatures from another world seem to know more about us and what happens to us than we do, and then they try to describe it by, you know, shrieking their heads off and frightening us, which, maybe not the best plan, but they're doing their best. That's, that's the important part. On the flip side, maybe it wasn't an omen, but a curse, and somehow Garrett's proximity to the creature marked him for an early and tragic demise. I mean, I don't know. I really don't. Another creepy fact here is that not just one, not just two, but like a whole bunch of people claim to shoot the creature point blank. And the most it did was hiss and then bounce away, um, which ties into a lot of different paranormal accounts, even Bigfoot accounts, where people say that they shot at it, you know, and they totally hit it and nothing happened. Um, I'm going to be discussing the Hopkinsville Hobgoblins in another video, and that's another case where they just were totally unaffected. Another, another creepy fact is that when you look through a lot of paranormal encounters, including but not limited to Bigfoot, the creepy clowns, aliens, fairies, big birds, um, the first sightings are usually, like when a flap occurs, are usually by children, and that is the case with the Enfield Horror. Um, I mean, there's even a precedent for UFOs, particularly manned UFOs, to appear over um, playgrounds and schools, so creepy stuff. You know, or maybe the Enfield Horror was just a jumbled mess like what I theorized the Dover Demon may have been. Um, you know, a flopped projection that came out with three legs and pink flashlight eyes and covered in slime. You know, the... But even so, the question remains then, if it was a projection, what was it supposed to be? Was it supposed to be a phantom kangaroo? Was it supposed to be a true-to-life mothman or a man in black or a world-class comedian or what was it? Whatever it was, I am just another tinfoil hat, signing off.